name is Shana Artra. I live in Brattleboro, Vermont. I've been a resident of Vermont for 20 years, and I have a PhD in psychology, and I'm an, I am an EMF testing professional. I'm not anti-tech. I'm pro-health and safety. I'm going to cut to the chase. Evidence-based studies worldwide have clearly established harmful effects of human exposure to cell towers, cell phones, and other pulsed radio frequency radiation devices, which I will describe in this presentation. By the FCC's own admission in testimony taken by Senator Blumenthal of Connecticut, the FCC has not conducted safety studies for, F for 5G. <clears throat> Yet, 5G is rolling out and exponentially increasing the public's exposure to cell towers. I'm here today to say in no uncertain terms that it has become necessary for Vermont legislators to stop relying on telecom lobbyists and the FCC. Legislators need accurate information to safeguard the health and safety of Vermonters. In these few minutes, I will describe some of the science of interaction between man-made radio waves and the human body, the effects of exposure, and the stance taken by the telecom-dominated FCC and President Trump regarding public safety. FCC guidelines are based on a 1996, that's 23 years old, study of how much a cell phone heated the head of one mannequin. They applied Newtonian physics, where a mechanical force acts on a physical object. This is problematic as those being exposed, us, to radio frequency radiation are fetuses, children, adults, plants, and wildlife made of cells and living tissue, not plastic. Living systems, included the human, including the human body, are bioelectrical. Our cells and tissues respond to electromagnetic fields of photons, visible and non-visible light. Photons are the particles of light and energy. Radio waves, such as those transmitted by cell towers, cell phones, and Wi-Fi routers, are electromagnetic fields that carry pulsating photons as energy encoded with data. Now, to clarify the research findings that I'm going to describe to you, first, I'm going to briefly describe what we mean by radio frequency <coughs> radiation and why 5G radiation in particular takes health impacts to an entirely new level. The term frequency refers to the number of waves per second passing a given point. Depending on the length of each wave, it may be visible to the human eye. You can see the waves changing as you go up the spectrum. Radio frequency radiation is the transfer of energy by these radio waves. It is referred to as RF radiation and is emitted from cell towers, cell phones, and other wireless devices. 5G uses a cocktail of three types of radiation. Radio waves have photons with low energies. Microwave photons have a little more energy, and millimeter waves have even more energy. This is the coverage capacity up to 5G, I mean 4G, and over here, the um, capacity of 5G. We're entering into a whole new part of the spectrum. 5G has extremely high frequencies, whereas 4G goes up to 6 gigahertz, 5G exposes biological life to pulsed signals in the 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz range. These higher frequencies, which include millimeter waves, have never been previously released into public areas. They have never been released into public areas. Why does this matter? Well, it turns out that our skin's sweat ducts intensely absorb the higher frequency waves. And they do so at a much higher absorption level than any other part of our skin. The skin and eyes act like receptors and they draw in the 5G waves. Now, this is even more alarming as the 5G build out adds a cell tower every two to 10 houses or buildings. The known impact of exposure to radio frequency radiation and serious concerns about 5G 
has prompted leaders in states like California, our neighbors New Hampshire and Massachusetts, and Oregon and others, and countries such as Italy, Belgium, Israel, Switzerland, and the Netherlands to place a moratorium on the 5G rollout. The FCC chairman, Tom Wheeler, has made it clear the telecom-dominated FCC will not put health first. It's up to us. He says, quote, stay out of the way of technological development. About the United States, he says, quote, unlike some countries, we do not believe we should spend the next couple of years studying. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to letting committees and regulators define the future. We won't wait for the standards. Unquote. In response to questions about the health concerns, Mr. Wheeler says, talk to the medical people. So here's what the medical people say in about 1,500 pages of abstracts. Over 2,000 international evidence-based studies, 2,000, correlate human suffering with pulsed radio wave radiation technology, such as cell towers, routers, cell phones, tablets, and other wireless devices. We know that RF radiation is carcinogenic, harmful at even low and short exposures, and it impacts our children and, our fet and fetuses more rapidly than it impacts adults. But no one is immune. We know that eight areas of harm for pulsed radiation with at least 100 biological effects exist. They are fertility, neurological and neuropsychiatric impacts, mutations, programmed cell death, free, rad free radical damage, hormonal effects, excessive intracellular calcium, and cancer. We also know how this damage can occur. DNA damage, voltage-gated calcium channels, blood-brain barrier opening, melatonin hormone reduction, and microbiome disruption. The US government has known of these risks since at least 1971. In 1971, the Naval Medical Research and Development Command published a bibliography containing 3,700 references reporting 100 non-thermal, biological, and clinical effects attributed to microwave and radio frequency radiation. By the mid-1990s, it became clear to the American Academy of Environmental Medicine that patients were adversely affected by electromagnetic fields and becoming electrosensitive. Electromagnetic field EMF hypersensitivity has been documented in controlled and double-blind studies with exposure to various EMF frequencies. It has been demonstrated that under double-blind controlled conditions, 100% of subjects showed reproducible reactions. Now, strong science produces repeatable results. Pulsed electromagnetic frequencies, as from cell towers, are shown to consistently provoke neurological symptoms, cell damage, and cancer. Some of the public statements that you're going to hear today will describe what it's like to live with these effects of hypersensitivity. Just a few of the many symptoms of overexposure to radio frequency radiation include depression, cancer, anxiety, headaches, muscle pain, attention deficits, infertility, loss of bone density, arthritis, insomnia, dizziness, tinnitus, skin tingling, loss of appetite, and nausea, just to name a few. In its report, the Navy listed 100 effects, including 40 neuropsychiatric changes, 14 nervous system changes, 17 psychological disorders, four behavioral changes, cardiac effects, endocrine effects, fertility effects, altered fetal development, the list goes on and on. At least 2,000 more evidence-based studies have been published since the Navy's publication. 
2,000 more evidence-based studies have been published since the Navy's publication. And these studies have confirmed that pulsed radio frequency radiation has biological effects. The damage spans are endocrine, cardiovascular, and nervous systems. These peer-reviewed, published papers are compiled in the Bioinitiative Report, which everyone here can access, <coughs> and I encourage you to do so, at bioinitiative.org. Bioinitiative.org. In contrast to the FCC's method, the science I am referring to has utilized the many approaches of evidence-based research, and they are shown in the pyramid here, sorry, it's small, meta-analysis, systematic review, randomized controlled trial, cohort studies, case control studies, case series, case reports, and animal research. In contrast to the FCC's method, the science I'm referring to has utilized evidence-based research. Whereas the FCC physicists tested for the heating of a plastic mannequin, these scientists have studied actual human beings. It's telling that insurance companies refuse to insure the wireless industry. In terms of cancer, recent findings, such as the $30 million 2018 United States National Toxicology Program study, have corroborated the findings of all well-designed heart and brain cancer studies of people with 10 or more years of exposure to cellular radiation from cell towers and cell phones. They all agree RF radiation causes cancer. So what's the response to all of this evidence? Scientists are urging the World Health Organization to update its classification of radio frequency radiation of radio frequencies from a group 2B carcinogen to a class 1 carcinogen, making radio frequencies and 5G comparable to arsenic and asbestos. World Health Organization's former chief of the research unit of epidemiology for cancer prevention, Andy Sasko, MD, asserts. Enough is enough. How many more deaths would be needed before serious action is taken? Evidence just continues to accumulate. And in the words of the designer of the National Toxicology Program study, Ronald Melnick, quote, what should happen now is the FDA should be immediately working on developing a quantitative risk assessment from this data, and in the meantime, the FDA, FCC, and other agencies should promote precautionary measures for the population, especially for children. <coughs> Dr. Paul, who is Professor Emeritus of Biochemistry and Basic Medical Sciences at Washington State University, gives an excellent overview of over 1,200 studies of the to the National Institute of Health. And you can find Dr. Paul's presentation, it's only nine minutes, on YouTube, and it's titled, The 5G, 5G Rollout is Absolutely Insane. This movement for public health and safety is also galvanized by 247 scientists from 42 nations who have signed the 5G appeal, urgently calling upon the United Nations and its sub-organizations and all UN member states for a moratorium on 5G. It has become necessary for our legislators to stop relying on telecom lobbyists and the FCC for the information legislators need to safeguard the health and safety of Vermonters. Vermonters deserve better than more cell towers placed closer to their bodies. I'd like to close with this message from President Trump. In his statement made last week on April 12th, he announced, quote, the FCC has taken action to streamline the permitting process with state and local governments. That's a big deal. It takes too long to get permits. We are going to free that situation up, and the local areas are going to listen to us very strongly. They must now approve new physical infrastructure in 90 days instead of many years and there is now a cap on the unreasonable fees local governments can charge. It is going to happen quickly, very quickly. 
Then, referring to the massive MIMO 5G antennas that would be placed in front of our homes and buildings, he went on to say, quote, they must be guarded from the enemy. They must cover every community and they must be deployed as soon as possible. No matter where you are, you will have 5G and it is going to be a different life. Oh, I don't know that it will be better. Maybe you won't <laughs> He goes on to say, I don't know that it will be better. Maybe you're happy with the way it is now. But I can say that technologically it won't even be close. <coughs> End quote. <clears throat> Thank you.